Hello, my name is Jared Skeens and welcome to Quick Fix. Let's see if we can uh, look at our IGCSC paper number 22 of our 2020, May, June 2020 series. So again, 2020 is new syllabus uh, now that we're moving into. And the May, June series is our first uh, test set. And this is paper 22. So again, again, it's an hour and 30 minutes long. So the time hasn't changed and the number of questions points haven't changed either. Still 70 points for the test. So let's work our way through this. Here we have the first question, write down the order of rotational symmetry of the diagram. Now it's a little difficult to see in the video. These four blocks up here are shaded and these four blocks down here are shaded. So these four and these four. And it says rotational symmetry, which means as you turn this uh, diagram in a circle, either clockwise or counterclockwise, how many times do you get to a place where there's no recognizable difference, <coughs> no distinction? And that would be two. So in other words, the way you see it now, and you could also rotate this corner around over here, which means this one would have been rotated over there and it would look identically the same. So there are two different places within the circle at which it has looks identical. So it's called rotational symmetry and the order is how many times it looks the same, which is two. Number two, at noon, the temperature in Masaru is 21 degrees Celsius. At midnight, had fallen by 26 degrees. So in other words, you subtract and you end up with a negative five degrees Celsius. And here we have a simple little diagram with a triangle. Here we see that there are uh, these two sides are the same and we have an angle of 50 so uh, if we do 180 minus 50 because they're supplementary they make a straight line we get 130 for in the triangle then one then because these two sides are the same it means these two angles are the same so this one over here is also X so then we add them up to 180 because the angles of a triangle add up to 180 so 130 plus 2x equals 180, 2x equals 50, x equals 25. Now just write down a square number greater than 10. Well, uh, your 3 squared is 9. So anything above 3 squared. So I just put 4 squared for 16. And it could be 5 squared 25, could be 36, 49, you know, as long as you have something greater than 10 and an irrational number. Now make sure you don't put a decimal down because at some point you're gonna to have to stop writing your decimal. And as soon as you stop, it's no longer irrational. So make sure you put like root two or root three, any number that does not come out of the root. So you can't put root four because that's two. You can't put root nine because that's three. So root two, three, five, six, seven, eight, all of those roots will be irrational numbers. Or you could, I imagine you could put pi or e, which are also irrational. Uh, but you could, don't put fractions and don't put decimals that stop. Number five, y equals mx plus c, just plug in the values and calculate it out, you should get negative two. All you have to do is be careful of your order of operations and your signs. Number six, here we have calculate the area of a trapezium. Your formula is one half, the sum of the two bases times the height. So again, it's just plugging in the numbers, calculating it out to get 45. On the Venn diagram, shade the region A, intersect B. This is Venn diagram notation for intersection where A intersects B and so you should shade in this little part right here in the middle. Then number eight, write two to the negative four as a decimal, not as a fraction. Of course you might want to write it as a fraction first. Two to the negative four is the same thing as one over two to the fourth, which is one over sixteenth, and as a decimal it's 0 0.0625 
course, you could just write this into your calculator at the very beginning and get 0 0.0625. Make sure you put it in decimal form. Number nine, here we have a bearing. The bearing of B from A is 105. So here's our A from A. You start at north, you rotate clockwise 105 degrees, and that is facing B. So if we subtract our 90 from the north to what would be east, uh, that 90 would leave 15 degrees left here. And so you draw in your little north, south, east, west down here. And these are parallel, meaning alternate interior angles are equal. So this is 15. Now it says find the bearing of A from B. So here's B. So starting from north and going clockwise, we get to 90, 180, 270, plus 15 more. So 270 plus 15 is 285. Simplify. Well, with multiplication, you just multiply straight across. So 4P squared Q over 2QT. The 2 and the 4 cancel, leaving you with 2. Uh, the Qs cancel, and that leaves you with 2P squared over T. Number 11, without using a calculator, work out this, uh, these fractions. Here you have a mixed number. So 1 times 4 is 4 plus 3 is 7 fourths minus 11 twelfths. We want a common denominator anytime we add or subtract fractions. So common denominator would be 12. Multiply top and bottom by 3 gives you 21 twelfths. And then 21 minus 11 is 10 over the 12. So your common denominator stays the same. You only subtract the numerators. And 10 twelfths reduces to 5 6. Notice it says to simplify. <clears throat> so 5 6. Number 12, <clears throat> Roberto buys a toy for $5, sells it for $4.60. Calculate the percentage of loss. Well, 5 minus $4.60 is, is 40 cents, and the original cost was 5, so 40 cents divided by 5 gives you 0 0.08, which is an 8% loss. Number 13, simplify. Uh, 8t to the 8th divided by 4t to the 4th. So with the coefficients, you just divide. With the exponent, you subtract. When you divide, exp uh, divide bases, you subtract exponents. So you get 8 divided by 4 is 2, and 8 minus 4 is 4, so 2t to the 4th. Solve the equation. So just multiply the other side by 3 to get rid of your fraction. 1 minus x equals 15. Add the x to the other side, subtract 15. To the other side, x equals negative 14. Number 15, Ella's height is 175 centimeters, correct to the nearest five centimeters. So this one's a little tricky because normally it's correct to the nearest centimeter and you would just do 174.5 or 175.5. But this doesn't say correct to the nearest centimeter, it says correct to the nearest five centimeters. So you need to divide that in half and add or subtract it. So we get 175 then becomes 172.5 or 177.5. Since this is looking for the upper boundary, it's the 177.5. 16, calculate this uh, uh, standard form cubed. Give your answer in standard form. Standard form, same thing as scientific notation. You can either do it on your calculator, uh, where you change your calculator into scientific notation uh, format, or you can just uh, do it manually. Remember, exponents distribute across multiply. So 3 cubed is 27. And when you have an exponent raised to an exponent, you multiply. So you get 10 to the negative 9. Also remember, standard form has a rule you can only have one digit in front of the decimal. So with 27, we have two digits in front of the decimal. So we need to move that decimal from the back up one slot to make it 2.7. I put 2.70 to have three significant figures, but it can just be 2.7. And then because we're making this number smaller, we need to add one to the exponent, making it 
10 to the negative eight. It's a little hard to see, but that is a negative eight there. 2.7 times 10 to the negative eight. Number 17, uh, we have a train of length 105 meters. So right here, I only draw the front part of the train. Uh, not very artistic uh, here, but uh, here's our train with the front part. And this is 105 meters long. It's going to go through a station that is 225 meters long. Calculate the speed of the train. Well, when this train gets through, it's, it's not just from the front part, it has to go all the way through, meaning it has to go the 225 meters of the station and then the 105 meters of the train need to get out of the station. So you have a total distance of 330 meters in 11 seconds and you need to change it into kilometers per hour. So to get meters into kilometers, we put 1,000 meters to one kilometers, that cancels out our meters unit. And then to get it from seconds to hours, uh, there are 3,600 seconds in one hour. So that cancels out the seconds. Now we're in kilometers per hour. And you calculate that out and it comes to 108 kilometers per hour. But again, don't forget to add these two distances because the entire train has to get through the station. So the front part of the train is here, and then the front part of the train is way out here, 225 plus the 105. 18 has this transformations question, describe fully the single transformation that maps T onto triangle U. This is not a rotation. It looks like a rotation, but the size of the triangle changed. So when the size changes, it has to be enlargement. So even though in this case T is getting smaller, you don't call it enshrinkment, you still call it enlargement. That's the category of transfer, transformation is enlargement. Uh, when it flips upside down like this, what means is that your corners are crisscrossed. Notice I use a straight edge and connect the appropriate corners and they crisscross. So that at where they crisscross is your center, that is three, four, and because they crisscross, it also means that you have a negative scale factor. Notice up to up here, your original is two uh, spaces across, and down here it's only one. So that means you took half of it, half of T to get U. So we have enlargement, scale factor of negative one half and a center of three, four, that's your three points. Number 19, make Y the subject of the formula. Be careful here, you cannot just square root. Square root does not distribute across add and subtract. Square root only distributes across multiply and divide. So be careful not to square root here at the beginning and cancel all your squares, that does not work. So instead, we need to subtract the x squared to the other side. Then we need to divide by two. We're trying to isolate the y. Then at this point, we square root. It does not cancel anything because of this uh, minus sign here. So we leave it over the entire fraction. Technically, you should put plus or minus, although they will accept it without it because when you square root, you have the positive and negative possible values of the square root of h, h squared minus x squared divided by two. Make sure your division bar is over the entire fraction, not just the top part of the fraction. Number 20, we look at this and we need to answer these questions here. Angle A, D, C. When we look at angle A, D, C, it's this one up here. At first it looks complicated until you realize that A, B, C, D makes a cyclical quadrilateral. It means you have a quadrilateral, four points that are on the edge of the circle. So this is a cyclical, cyclical quadrilateral. What that means is your opposite angles have to add up to 180. So this 131 
and this ADC have to add up to 180. So your ADC, where the D is the middle letter, then is 49. Now angle AOC, angle AOC is right here. So angle AOC is the angle that is opposite of the 131. So if I, uh, this 131 is an inscribed angle, which means the arc that's over here, this major arc from A to C is going to be twice that. Inscribed angles are half of the arc. So if we multiply that by two, subtract it from 360, that leaves 98 degrees for this minor arc and the, end, uh, the central angle is equal to the minor arc of 98 degrees. So 60 minus 360 minus two times the 131, because 131 is inscribed, so you have to double it. Take 360 minus it, it gives you 98, which is equal to your central angle. Angle BAT, here's BAT, and BAT, has the same connecting points on the circle, B and A, as this 20 degrees. So BAT is actually called an extend, it's still a, a inscribed angle because it's right here, the vertex is on the, the edge of the circle, but it's extended to the tangent and A is the tangent point. So it is still a kind of an extended version of your inscribed angle. So since this inscribed angle and this inscribed scribed angle have the same connecting points, the A and B, then they're the same. So that's 20 degrees. Angle OAB, angle OAB is also uh, an angle here. Notice that OAT, this is from the origin to the tangent so that means this is a 90. If from the origin to the tangent it's going to be perpendicular and so if we just take 90 minus the 20 degrees of our, ins of our inscribed angle here we get the other one which is 70. So 90 minus 20 equals 70 degrees. Moving on, simplify. We have 5x to the fourth cubed. Remember exponents distribute over multiplication. So five cubed is 125. Exponent raised to an exponent means you multiply, so we get 12, 125 x to the 12th. Here you also have same thing, exponent distributes over multiply. So we have 256 raised to the 3 8 power, which you can do on your calculator and get eight. And then you have 256 times the 3 8 which is 96, so eight x to the 96. Now we move down to this proportional problem. It is directly proportional, so P equals K is our proportionality constant. A lot of students forget to put in their proportionality constant. K directly means to multiply it by what follows, which is Q plus two squared. The first set of numbers is so that you can find the K. So one and one, one plus two is three, three squared is nine. Divide by the 9, k is 1 ninth. Plug that back into your original formula. So now that we have the k, we can plug in our second set of numbers. Our plug in one of them, we find the other one. So q is 10, 10 plus 2 is 12, 12 squared is 144, and 1 ninth of 144 is 16. Moving on to our graphing. By drawing suitable lines and shading the unwanted regions, find the region R. So x greater than two, crossing the x-axis at two. We want the greater, we don't want the less. So we're shading the unwanted regions. Here's x equals two, shade to the left. Here is x greater than, y greater than or equal to x. That's this line right here. It's like y equals mx plus c, where the c is zero and your M is an understood one. So up one over one, up one over one. Notice all the way I put the little dots. Use straight edge to draw the line through. It's equal to, so these are all solid lines. And it says greater than, which would be above it, 
but the unwanted then is the less than. So I shade perpendicular to the less than direction. Then this one here, 2x plus y less than or equal to 8. Take 8 divided by 2 is 4. That's the x-intercept. 8 divided by 1 is 8. That's the y-intercept. So there's the two intercepts. Draw the line through and it's read it from the y variable. It says less than. So again, the unwanted is in the greater than direction. And that leaves this little tiny triangle in here as our region, our feasibility region. So B, find the largest value in the region of X plus Y. Well, when you're doing the feasibility region, it comes, your maximum or minimum comes from the vertex. So since this is maximum, it's usually gonna be the highest vertex which is two, four, two for X, four for Y. So two plus four is six. Moving on here, we have a sector area. The diagram shows a sector of a circle of radius eight and a arc length of 6.4. Find the area of the sector. Well, first we need to find the angle. Notice I am using radians formulas, not the degree formula. You could use the degree formulas, but there are a little bit more to them. You should also know the radians formulas. So arc length equals r theta. This is again the radians formula, not the degree formula. So theta is just arc length divided by r, 6.4 divided by eight is 0.8. So this is 0.8 radians. Notice there's no degree mark on it. Then your area for a sector, again, using radians formula is one half r squared theta. And you just plug in the r and the theta and you get 25.6. You could do it in degrees, but you would have, you know, a little bit more work to show and use different formulas. 25 simplify. So on the top, you have a quadratic factors of 15 are three and five that combine with the factors of two, which are one and two. So two times three is six. Notice we want to subtract to get a one. So six minus five gives us the one. So two X times X is two X squared. Negative five times three is negative 15. Six X minus five X is one X. On the bottom, we have factoring by grouping. So basically you can just cut this in half, take out the A, which leaves you an X plus three. On this side, you're gonna divide out a negative two b which again leaves you with x plus three then you factor out the x plus three and that leaves you with a minus two b the a plus three is on top and bottom cancel leaving you with two x minus five over a minus two b they give you five points for that really it's two different factoring problems within a simplification 26 has this uh, equation and I want you to find the value of n. So I find it easier to work in exponent form. So I convert the radical form into uh, exponent form or indice form. So remember it's power over index number. Power over index number, so you have y to the 2 thirds equals x to an understood one over six, so one six. Then to get y by itself, you need to uh, reciprocate this fraction and basically you're multiplying both of the exponents by three halves when you multiply the left side by three halves they cancel out just giving you one when you multiply the right side by three halves again you're working with exponents so exponent raised to an exponent you multiply and it reduces to three twelfths which reduces to one fourth and then change it back into your radical form, power over index number. So the power of the X is one, the index number is four, and that's what it's looking for. The value of N is the index number, which is four. Moving on here to number 27. Here we have this cuboid shape with a lot of different, uh, lines going a lot of these different diagonals. The diagram shows a cuboid. AB is eight, uh, AD is six, and DH is also six. And we wanna find the angle between H, A, and F. So 
So it's this angle here, HAF is right between these two diagonals. So these diagonals are actually quite easy if you recognize this one follows your 1, 1, root 2 pattern. They're both sides are 6, so that means the diagonal has to be 6 root 2. You can calculate it using Pythagorean theorem, but you should also be able to recognize it straight away as 6 root 2. Same thing as this over here. This is one of your triplets. This is your 3, 4, 5, or actually a multiple of your 3, 4, 5 right triangle. So you have 6, 8, 10. Again, you can calculate it using Pythagorean theorem, or you can recognize it as a multiple of your triplet. Same thing with this one up here. This one is also a multiple of your triplet 6, 8, 10 up here for that side. And so now we have sides, but no angles. So we can use our law of cosines. So 10 squared equals 6 root 2 squared plus this 10 squared minus 2 times 6 root 2 times 10 times cosine of our angle that we're solving for. And then you work yourself through algebraically. Remember, you need to move these to the other side because multiplication uh, is a higher priority than the adding and subtracting. So be careful not to subtract this value here, this 120 root two. You need to make sure to divide it. So some students make the mistake because they just do all of this right here on their calculator. You can't do that. Multiplication has to be, uh, this has to be done first before this. So these two can be moved over. You end up with a negative 72. Then you divide by the negative 120 over root two. The negatives cancel, leaving you this inverse cosine, and you'll end up with 64.895. We only need it to one degree, so 64.9. So there we go. There we went through an hour and a half test in 30 minutes. And this is our, again, new syllabus 2020, the May-June series or the summer series, paper 22. And I hope that that was helpful for you. So thank you for watching and hope to see you again next time.